Certainly, you most certainly can, Ben. It's uh, it's it's great to be on the show. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. Give us uh, give us the, just a quick down low on your background as a geochemist, and then I want to get into how you how you discovered uh, uh, the so called secrets of the soil as the book as uh, the title of the, of the book. I love that book. Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. Well, well, I, I mean, it feeds beautifully into you know you know into my history. My background is uh, undergraduate degree in geology. Um, spent ten years um, working in um, uh, the environmental field. In the fact, in dealing with the 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 opposite of what we're going to talk about today, which is um, an excess of of metals and minerals in soils and at, at contaminated sites. Um, so, did you know? Basically, travelled around the world looking at um, contaminated sites, mining sites, uh, industrial mm. sites, um, and getting a feel for, for for how minerals operate under those conditions. Um, went back and did a PhD in soil mineralogy and geochemistry, um, which was the flip side of that, um, working out you know you know you know what role do minerals play at much lower concentrations um, for um, for for plant uptake and nutrient um, uptake. You mentioned six to the you mentioned six to the soil. That Love was that actually book. the book. That was actually the book um, that uh, made me want to go back and study that particular mm. uh, field of remineralization. Did you um, did you guys excuse me for interrupting? When you were studying in school, did they tell you about about problems with the soil, about soil depletion of minerals, et cetera? Did they talk about that at all? Well, well, Ben, as you can tell, I'm not from, you know I'm not from around here, right. um, and you know, you know you know and growing up in Australia. Um, our soils are highly depleted, highly weathered. They'd been weathered for 40 million years. A lot, uh, you know, a lot of these soils. Um, so what had happened that just through the natural process of weathering and leaching, the minerals just get leached out. It's just a natural reaction of how you know the interaction between water and and rocks. You know, which firstly form the soil, which we then grow the plants from, but then over time it depletes. And Australia is actually a very fascinating st- place to be studying. Uh, mineral nutrition because it's very very low, and the native plants in Australia have adapted strategies for actually um, uh, to, you know, living in these these very low um, soil mineral uh, environments. So, they, so, so they, yes, it was it was it was it was front and foresight in the uh, the work I was doing. Do they trap? Do Australian plants trap minerals more effectively because they're in soil deplete? They're growing in in uh, soil de- uh, depleted soils. Yeah, so the native, so let's, just talking about the native plants for, 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 for a moment, the answer is yes. There is a, um, a, a, a group of plants called, uh, called uh, Protasia, which is a, a, a banksia. You've probably, you, you, you may or may not have seen them. Um, they have a very fascinating uh, root structure um, uh, combined with, with a fungal community that helps them cycle very low phosphorus. Um, so you'll find them in, so they're very indicative of low phosphorus uh, environments. The other thing that, that, that in Australia the plants are um, uh, they're evergreen, so they're constantly just, just just dropping the leaves to get you know you know to to get that cycling um, uh, nutrient cycling going on in the plant in the um, uh, in, in 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 the soils, and obviously fire. Uh, is a very important um, mm. uh, 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 item in Australia or, or, or process in Australia, and and the plants have developed very quickly how to get in there and take advantage of the nutrients that are suddenly released in, a, in, in mm. you know in a fire situation. So so you get that very rapid succession, um, and it's 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 really quite fascinating in Australia. You go you know within three or four weeks after a major fire has gone through, the place is already green again. Wow! Uh, because, so good you know, fire. Because, a good fire is helpful, in other words. Well, 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 well it is, but, it, but, but, but what it's done is it's released those nutrients that the plants can then take it, the, 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 the native community can take advantage of. That's great. So, so fires, wildfires that we hear about every summer and, and the, the natural course of fire, uh, of the development of fires is actually a good thing for the, for the ecosystem, right? Yeah, the, in, in, so, so, so a lot of the, the, the natural fire systems are a, a much lower intensity, move through, clean out the, um, the, you know, the understory, the underbrush, release the nutrients, get new growth going. So, I, I, so, so yes, that's important. The downside is that because we've spent, and this is true in Australia, not just here in the US as, uh, uh, as well, is that we've gone through fire mitigation or fire suppression so that what happens is we get a fuel source that, that, that is built up so when we tend to get a fire, it becomes catastrophic. And then, obviously, you throw the changing climate conditions on top of that as well. You know, we're, we, we are seeing the, the increased incidence of more catastrophic fires uh, what, in our system. What are some of the more, most significant mineral deficiencies associated with depletion? Uh, in, so we're in talking terms, more on... In terms of minerals. On, yeah, on, 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 so on an agricultural side of things, um, 
I would say copper is is, mm. is probably the most. Copper is a very interesting nutrient, a very interesting mineral in that it tends to to um, uh, be removed more quickly than just about other uh, other minerals. And that's true just through the natural weathering cycle I was talking about earlier, um, and it's true in plant uptake as well. So I think copper is, is probably one of the most deficient ones. And if you have a look at a lot of the diseases around... Uh, um, you know, Vascular diseases. Side of things. Copper, you know, you know, you know, copper deficiency uh, in our soils is is is, is paramount. Um, second to that, I'd say manganese, um, oh. then followed by probably zinc. Uh, so, are, are, are probably the three the three main ones. What about sulfur uh, that we're looking at? What about sulfur deficiency? Uh, <laughs> you know what. Interesting question, Ben. I'll be honest. I don't know. I haven't really looked at sulfur deficiency. Um, uh, most of the ones I've been looking at have been more the, you know, the, the the metal minerals. But hang on, I'm just pulling up some information here. Yes, yeah, so actually, I suspected is, sulfur. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So no sulfur. In fact, I'm looking at um, some information on some uh, some wheat growing um, uh, in the Great Plains. Um, and yes, yeah, sulfur deficiency um, has. Uh, yeah, is is certainly prevalent and is up there with um, the likes of something like selenium, for example. Okay, now we're gonna, before we get to we're going to take a break here in a second. I want to talk about what we can do. I also want to talk about some of the differences between minerals and minerals. You know, you hear about colloidal sure. minerals, and you hear about soil minerals, and you hear about metallic minerals and toxic minerals. And I want to address that as well. And then I want to address. Uh, I want to talk to you about how you got involved with longevity. Real quick, though, we got about thirty seconds here. What's the Ascension Soil Company? Can you do that in thirty seconds, or should we wait for our break? Yeah, no, no, basically, I'm, uh, it, it is uh, dedicated to bringing soils to life. Taking okay. degraded soils, whether they'd be contaminated with too much or, or deficient in not enough, and finding that balance so that we can grow healthy, health, healthy plants for, for whatever the purpose, whether it's agriculture, reclamation, remediation, All right. whatever. we got to take a break, Andrew. A little over a year ago, I began to do a lot of research into why, even though I had a pretty good-sized meal, that I was still starving. And my research led me to a well-known fact that most of the soils that we grow our crops on here in the United States and across the industrialized world are almost completely depleted of almost all of the key minerals and trace elements that our bodies need to rebuild themselves, fight off cancer, and be healthy. I then searched out the best vitamin and mineral company out there and discovered Longevity. The Longevity products are designed to give you the real nutrition you need, and once you've got that, you don't have to eat as much to be satisfied. I've lost 37 pounds in two months simply getting the vitamins and minerals I need. Check it out for yourself. It's incredible. Go to InfoWarsTeam.com today and order your first canister of Beyond Tangy Tangerine Complete Multivitamin Mineral Complex Dietary Supplement. That's InfoWarsTeam.com. So we decided to upgrade the look of our home. You know, improve the curve appeal. We decided to add the look of stone to the exterior. We really like the stacked stone look. Yeah, but when I checked into the price, it was ridiculous. No way could we afford it. Then a friend told me about Genstone. G-E-N-S-T-O-N-E. Genstone comes in lightweight panels made of polyurethane. They've actually engineered the hassle out of installation. No mortar, no mesh. It was easy. Even I could do it. We just screwed the panels to the wall and it looks like stone. Stone. I mean, it really looks like stone. Yeah, from the box to the wall in minutes. We love the look of our home now. And Genstone is durable, comes with a 25-year warranty, and offers additional R-value for insulation. If you want the look of stone at a price you can afford, call Genstone. At 855-955-STONE. Trust me, you'll save money. And you'll love the look. 855-955-STONE. That's 855-955-7866. If you need to say happy birthday, happy anniversary, thank you, or simply I'm thinking of you, ProFlowers.com is the key. ProFlowers has stunning bouquets, like the best-selling 100 blooms for $19.99. Plus, ProFlowers will include a glass vase for free. Sending someone a wonderful surprise of beautiful flowers sent fresh from the field is easy. Choose the bouquet you like, pick the delivery date, and each order is 100% guaranteed. Plus, all bouquets from Pro Flowers are guaranteed to last at least seven full days. Beautiful, fragrant flowers, picked fresh and sent to your loved one for lasting enjoyment. To get this incredible savings and send someone 100 gorgeous blooms with a free vase for $19.99, 
Go to proflowers.com, click the blue microphone in the top right corner, and enter code PLOW. That's proflowers.com. Click the mic and enter code P-L-O-W. At 30dayfoodsupply.com, you can now purchase a -a one-of-a-kind product not available anywhere else. A meatless burger dry mix in four delicious flavors. With our new Oregon Trail Foods vegan burgers, all you do is add water and fry. They need no refrigeration. They're packaged in Mylar bags with an oxygen absorber for a long shelf life. They're non-GMO. They're gluten, soy, nut, and chemical-free, but they're loaded with flavor. And a good source of carbs and protein, yet low in sodium. Flavors include Italian, spicy Mexican, six vegetable and black bean olive go to 30dayfoodsupply.com or call 541-229-0010 and order today eat them every day take them camping or save them for an emergency check them out at 30dayfoodsupply.com and click on the vegan burger icon that's 30dayfoodsupply.com where all of our products are produced in oregon by oregon trail foods 30dayfoodsupply.com Independently leading the way for the nation. Compelling talk for every political persuasion. We are GCN. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're talking to Dr. Andrew Harley, Ph.D. Doc, before uh, we went to break, I made you rush through that. I apologize. Tell Real quickly, the Ascension Soil Company, that's your, that's your company that's dedicated to bringing soils to life, correct? That is correct. Okay, good. And, and you know, you know, I, you know, both ends. You know, we, you know, I deal on the deficiency side, but I also deal with on the the excess side. And so, you're con- you know, you know, you know, cleaning up contaminated sites, mining sites, things like that. So you, um, con- as well as well as the agricultural side. As a consultant, you're talking about or helping as spread a the word? Yes. Sir. Ah, I see. Okay, good. Okay, so. Uh, uh, you hear this all the time if you're dealing, doing longevity, and we'll talk about your involvement with longevity here in a minute. But we hear this all the time about, oh, there's toxic minerals, and my doctor told me there's aluminum. And, you know, and I, I talk about this all the time in the program. I get sick of even talking about it, to tell you the truth. Sure. The difference between minerals and uh, how not all minerals are the same. There's metallic minerals, and there's colloidal minerals, and there's soil. Uh, there, there's microbial and, and, and biological minerals of sorts, I guess you could say. Tell, real quickly, like, from a Ph.D. point of view, you. What is the distinction between so-called metallic and toxic minerals and colloidal minerals, minerals uh, that have been manipulated by plants and by the soil? Uh, yeah, that, look, and 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 actually, Ben, you've just you've just hit it. You you you've, you've hit it exactly on the on the, on the head. So so I'll take it. I'll take it even one step back. Even from, from a geological standpoint, so a rock is composed of 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 particular minerals. So quartz, for example, is a mineral. Most people, would have, you know, every, you know, everyone would have heard of uh, of quartz. And then there's there's as as there are different elements that are added into those uh, in, 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 into the, the crystalline structure, we, be, we get different minerals. So minerals from a geological sense are those when you pick up a rock, pick up a granite, or look at a beautiful granite countertop, um, you'll see the, the, the what are called geological minerals. When those get released, and they can get released in, 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 in several pathways, as I said, as I was describing, just the, 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 the 40 million year weathering in Australia, just the interaction of, of, of water with these rocks, these, uh, these rocks over time releases the particular elements. Now, where those elements go and how they, how they are, are, are absorbed or taken up depends on their, their, their components. When they stay, so, so for example, if they just continue to stay in a dissolved form to so, so stay within water, then depending on their concentration, they can actually build up and, and become metallic in a, in, 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 in a sense. Um, however, when they're taken up by plants, then they become part of the um, uh, the plant structure, and you know, you know, you know, minerals are very important in driving uh, biochemical processes. So, so they're is, biological; is, they become biological in essence. That's that's correct. So this is where this is where you're turning geology basically into biology. Ah, uh, uh, nice. You, you know, you know, and that's 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 essentially the process. Um, now, interestingly enough, there was there was a there, there was a fascinating uh, piece of work that was done in Wisconsin, I believe, um, where they were were dealing with infertility, um, and that they were by by, by adding manganese uh, onto the pasture, the plant was taking up the manganese, and the infertility in the cows were was was taken care of. Where, you know, 
being the smart scientists that we are, this is, oh, well, we can, you know, you know, you know, we can miss putting it out. Um, you know, you know, we can avoid a step. 